No amount of rain was going to ruin the festivities on Sunday for the Florida Panthers, but they have a quick turnaround going into day one of free agency and great news. It is reported that Sam Reinhart is staying in South Florida. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Monday, July 1st edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez from the Hockey News. You can follow me on X at Man 12 follow show count on X and Instagram at L underscore F. LA Panthers and shout out to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as the playoffs have finished and it's baseball and MLS in full swing. FanDuel is the place to go. It's the sports shop. It's because a lot of the sports have stopped sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to Get started. So, Panther fans, today on the agenda, with a lot going on that went on, excuse me, during the weekend after everything with the NHL awards and going into the draft and now championship celebration, day one of free agency, where everything has gone on uh, for the Panthers and everything still celebrating their Stanley Cup victory. But with the news that came in overnight, going into July 1st, which, by the way, happy Canada Day for everyone north of the border celebrating. And I guess if you're a northern, uh, if you're a Panther fan above the um, north of the border, I guess go Blue Jays because they play an afternoon game every year on uh, July 1st. I mean, hey, the Washington Nationals always play an afternoon game on July 4th. The Boston Red Sox always do it on Patriots Day, too. So cool, pretty cool traditions that we have uh, here. But the the big topic at hand to start off the show because with free agency i was originally gonna have this as my third segment but now we have to flip it around and do it for our first segment in the biggest news of the day for in the in the world of the florida panthers and that was the question that we had all season and even going into the um, free agency is is the whether Sam Reinhart was going to stay here long term. And this is something that we spoke about, about all the years that he dealt with losing in Buffalo, playing well, even when Jack Eichel was hurt prior to the trade to Florida, which you look at everything, which we even spoke about with Nick Fairbanks on Fairbanks Friday about the draft and going into that, how you develop your guys and maybe turn them into great, great trade chips for prove NHL proven guys, get them in your system. Maybe, maybe they, either carried a team too much and they were um, relied on too much or they just have they just have were on the verge of scratching the surface and that was Sam Reinhart who was a 20 goal scorer for many years in Buffalo and now uh, multiple 30 goal seasons and a 50 goal season too for him with the Florida Panthers and developing his two way game too uh, what the second unit on the ice him and Barkov and it, it is reported for eight more years that he's going to be under this contract. We still don't know the AAV. We still don't know the clauses yet on this deal for Sam Reinhardt. But it is look, looking really good and that he is going to be staying long term with the Panthers. And this is a, and just think about this. Had the Panthers come came in, if they came into this free agency, losing the Stanley Cup, then the questions about is this the actual core that and and the uh, and the team that you can build around the guys to get back? And like I said, the mindset that would have been for this team about about the pr- trying to promise getting back to the final, but actually wondering to yourself, do is it is this something that's actually believable? Because you have this, you do it once. Yes, you're you're not and not to say that the hockey players aren't motivated to go back and to and to write another redemption story, but the miles along with it and the mental toll that it takes to get back and for the Panthers to win their cup and also to keep a team around because think about like the Colorado Avalanche, for example, they trade for a guy like Josh Manson in, in their in their from the Anaheim Ducks. They extend them after they win the cup. 
same thing for the Tampa Bay Lightning. You've seen so many guys uh, trade um, who were extended after they won, like an Anthony Sorelli, Eric Chernak too. Those are guys who got extended as like a way of saying thank you for giving us this championship run. We want we want to pay you, and we think that we you are one of the building blocks to even bring a championship, another championship, even if there's a little bit of a gap year here and there, because possibly in these next eight in these next seven ish years, eight years for the Panthers, you're you're gonna see maybe one gap year or two as this team is gonna get a little older because still but also the great thing about the short term for the Panthers is that the average age of the of the core guys are mostly in their late twenties, their prime years, excuse me, is the right is the word that I was trying to find here. Is that is what you're getting here and you're maximizing what these guys can do in their prime years. And going into this one, I mean, you you saw how during all the all the space that teams need to clear in order to bring guys in. I mean, you think about how the Tampa Bay Lightning traded uh, Ch- Tanner Janot, uh, Mikhail Sergachev to create possibly space to bring in a Jake Gensel into the mix and still no offer for Steven Stamkos. You saw Logan Thompson traded during the um, an autograph session in the draft <laughs> too, which is hard to process if you're him. Uh, Rights to Chris Tanev uh, to Toronto too. So the division is only getting harder uh, for, for the Panthers. And the fact that they took advantage of their Stanley Cup window while it's been here, because I th- I still believe that it's still here, too. Is it going to get harder to to win and go back to back? Absolutely. Even Vinny Viola during the parade says, was saying, hey, let's go back uh, next year. He was, he, when you, but also when you win, you just want to keep doing it again. Uh, absolutely. But there's also we're there's also another thing to be looking out for during free agency and it's whether Carter Verhage something that we spoke about going into the weekend about him be, having one year left on his deal and and looking for that extension uh too for him as a guy who wasn't qualified an offer for the Tampa Bay Lightning after they won the cup and look uh Panthers brought him in ex- um two year deal then another deal uh right the year before he became an RFA and then now and now getting hopefully hopefully getting business done right before the year before he becomes an unrestricted free agent. But the Panthers do have quite a few unrestricted free agents on their on their on their books, uh, too. And this is according to Cap Friendly, too, but you get which will be going away uh, pretty soon as the Washington Capitals bought it out. So there's also going to be other resources to use. One that is going to be useful is Puckpedia. So if you need to transition from one to the other. Puckpedia is your resource, but the following UFAs, uh, at least noted um, notable UFAs for the Panthers, are Nick Cousins, Ryan Lomberg, Brandon Montour, Oliver Ekman Larson, Dmitry Kulikov, Kevin Stenlin, Kyle Pozo, Stephen Lawrence, Anthony Stolarz. Chances are uh, Montour and Anthony Stolarz are likely gone. Those guys are going to get some some cash uh, for them. As Brandon Montour, no guarantee that he reflects his play from. Paul Maurice's system to someone else's because really he hadn't really exploded, especially offensively really until Paul Maurice came. So, and also when you're a Stanley cup champion, your price is going to go up. So that's the hardest, but that's the great, that's the thing about being in a cap sport of like the, like the, like the NHL, especially if you're a hard cap where you can't restructure contracts too. That's going to be a really difficult. Everything in your contract is set in stone, AAV, and guarantees. There's bonuses, obviously, so that changes buyout situations uh, too, depending on how how you go about that route with signing bonuses and 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 all. But that that is definitely one something to look out for, even for Reinhardt's contract, uh, which once again we still don't have the details. David Dork reported that Ryan Lomberg has priced himself out. Ryan Lomberg has been here for a little bit now uh for for the panthers and hopefully he brings some of those good stanley cup fi- final uh vibes for him up up to wherever he might go and one honestly the least surprising thing we saw during the parade was ryan lomberg uh celebrating without a shirt on with, without a shirt on but all reckman larson was always seen as a stopgap Dmitry kulikov is a little bit on the older side now in his early 30s so maybe another veteran one year or two year deal Hey, now maybe his stock is up of being a Stanley Cup champion. And honestly, this is maybe one extension that I maybe wish that Bill Zito did during the during the season as a very important piece for the Florida Panthers. Yeah, he's gonna get a raise more than likely, but how much of a raise? And if and if his demands aren't too high, this is really, really one that I want the the 
front office to keep. And I want them. To, I really want hope that Kevin Stenland, especially, is still on that fourth line. I think Kalak Pozo. Why would you not ride off into the sunset uh, um, as a Stanley Cup champion after all those years that you worked for? So I think this is the perfect way for him to go. And Stephen Lawrence, big body into the system for him. Uh, th- that That is definitely hopefully one for him. Uh, maybe the negotiation would be, even though you didn't play a lot of games, we would still like to have you be a part of our our family and our and and our our, our culture here. So maybe, and, and Steven Lawrence is a, seems like a yes person too, based on how my interactions with him, my very few interactions and just is very blessed uh, to, to be in the NHL. This is, a, this is something that a conversation definitely that I've had with him and, and just a very easy person to cheer for. And a notable RFA for the Panthers to look out for Anton Lindell. They can still wait um, a a little bit for him. So take care of your UFAs. And if you don't see anything on Anton Lindell yet, that's so if if they don't, then, you know, we can be a little bit calm because you still want to take care of your, a little bit of your UFAs and also see what's out there and also see what kind of trays are out there because there's a chance that Aaron Ackblad could be moved to clear cap space because if you're signing Reinhardt and it's about 9.5, you have about 10 million to play with, with not a lot of money to go around. And that is some, cash that you could really use to get some one or two year um one or two million dollar deals for some role players here and there and that money could be very useful as the cap is only rising about five million uh 88 million is what the cap is going to be but we're going to transition over to segment number two we're going to talk more about the parade of what happened on sunday afternoon morning slash afternoon we're going to discuss that and more next here on the locked on florida panthers podcast Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. And I love sports. I love them so much, and I never want them to stop. But the playoffs have finished. Free agency is here. We get fewer games, and the sports aren't sport- sporting like we want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. And all I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily that's right there's something for everyone every day all summer long head over to fanduel.com and start making the most out of your summer fanduel official sports betting partner of major league baseball welcome back to this july 1st edition of the locked on florida panthers podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team Every day. Thank you once again for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And you're watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day. Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you the can't miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. So let's talk about that parade. So there was a, a lot of fans there really early and al- also 11 years. Yes, 11 years to the day that Barkoff got drafted second overall by the Florida Panthers, June 30th, 2013. And now June 30th, 2024, the Panthers celebrate a parade. So they won a championship on, an, on the anniversary of their expansion draft and then celebrating a championship parade after a franchise player gets drafted. So all these different correlations, all these connections in Florida Panthers history, shout out to Francisco Porta, Florida Panthers historian on that. Uh, But (laughs) the amount of signs that we saw, one that said last rat standing uh, too. uh, And all the, all the quotes too, from the players to bagpipers playing in the streets on a one a, and then, Matthew Kachuk getting off the off the off the vehicle that was transporting the Panthers uh, to to Las Olas, even the beach, even to the beach and all, and and it's great great to see just the amount of jubilation celebration that was going around all all of South Florida and everyone who came to the came to Fort Lauderdale Beach, which by the way. Fort Lauderdale Beach, that location on A1A and Las Olas, where they've had uh, Odyssey Beach Festival, All-Star Weekend, 
and and also the championship parade can't ask for a perfect uh place to have that championship celebration seeing people on the different stories of the elbow room having a great view of the of the stage and also with with the once the guys got onto the stage uh goldie goldie steve goldstein the play-by-play voice of the florida panthers for ballet sports giving asking people the amount of people in the crowd who's who are from the keys who are from palm beach and as a person from dade county it would have been solely socially acceptable for me when he was asking all the people who are from Hialeah if he said que vola I said it. Honestly, personally for me, I would have been okay with him saying that just for South some South Florida uh, culture there uh for this championship celebration. Hey, Steve Goldstein's been in the market for a long time and it, it would have been and this is just a celebration that is just nothing could go wrong uh on, on a day like uh last night. <laughs> unless you're that uh unless you're that one reporter from local 10 who put the microphone in front of the fan and then there was uh, some profanity there and then she pulled the mic back and was like well wasn't expecting that we're on live tv and speaking of live tv a lot of f-bombs during the during the during the celebration and jokingly i texted my manager of uh here at locked on saying you so you're mean to tell me that i can't quote any of the of the, of what they said in the parade on the podcast and the answer was unfortunately no not like i was expecting a yes e- either way uh for hey that's why we maybe we should get a patreon like we said on our uh post game for the stanley cup final uh and then, then you could it could be unfiltered there but also the amount the hype music too going back to the dj genesis playing all the tracks from warm-ups prior to prior uh, to the celebration, it was like you were at a Panthers game, but taking it to the beach. Uh, and and Chucky mentioned her earlier of him get um getting off uh in, in the middle of the celebration to be with the fans. Uh, and also saying it's sun it's sunny in Edmonton, but they ain't got no cup. All, the the amount of hate that still exists in this man's body for the Edmonton Oilers, going back to the Battle of Alberta. Paul Maurice, who said that. He was going to keep uh, information on his cats undisclosed. Winning the Stanley Cup, one lo- one part, the front part of his shirt with the one cat on the face of the panther, and then on the back, the leaping panther, on, on the face on the leaping panther. So both logos uh, for for of his cats, and this is the most this is the most you're going to see out of him. And also saying thirty bleeping years, and also pointing to his wife and saying. And for her, thirty bleeping years of being married to, to a to an a hole for for him. But also, this also goes to show the kind of family man that he is. As uh, in regard to, thank you for your pay. It's another way of saying thank you for your patience. As I've tried to get get obtain this goal of being a Stanley Cup champion, and also great quote that he said about after the Stanley Cup, which I wanted to share on the show that I don't think I have yet. He said he didn't win the Stanley Cup. He got to share the Stanley Cup. And all that family-oriented type of mentality that Paul Maurice has, he's a freaking legend in this region, too. I mean, just that alone. The Stanley Cup was never going to define him as a person or even a coach. But he, I feel like he's always seen it as like a little bit of an added bonus for him. And that, and honestly, I, I like that kind of mindset out of, out of, out of a coach. Yeah, you want to win. And, and also, it goes to show how hard it is, too. And to see all the to for him to to reap all the rewards in this kind of celebration, and who and just like who who cares about all the all the all the profanity that that he laid out? Go do do you, coach? We're 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 happy for you. And also, just like how uh, Roberto Luongo said, uh, who who cares about the rain? Uh, banging the drum again, the good luck charm for Game Seven, the passion he brought that same passion to that championship parade too. So great to see all the different uh, eras of Florida Panthers hockey, and the one who represents it the most, and Roberto Luongo being part of that, and then. Barkoff starting a Bobby chant after after when he gets up to the stage. Uh, Ekblad, Aaron Ekblad, uh, probably with the with the biggest quote coming with a traffic cone on his head and saying uh, "F you, Brooks Kepka." Uh, after everything that happened in that Rangers game back um, back in tw- um, 
2023, right before the playoffs, as the Panthers were just uh, a few points out, scratching and clawing to get into the postseason. And look, <laughs> uh, 16 months, I believe, 15, 16 months later, that's still resurfacing for the Florida Panthers as they are in, in their championship celebration. But a celebration for the ages in South Florida and one that if people tell you that that the fans did not come to support the Florida Panthers in their parade, show them that video from Jeremy Taché from Bally Sports Florida, which Jeremy Taché had quite a few uh, interviews where he was getting poured on uh, too. But sh- go to that video on Jeremy Taché's X page uh, where you're going to see the sea of red uh, on A1A and Las Solas there. And just the, the, the crowd was amazing despite the, despite the weather and it, you don't know if you're going to get this again. So why leave? So it's, it's just for, for Florida, you realize that you always knew that South Florida could throw a party. Obviously you have, it's the gateway to Latin America. You have the great weather. And also for, for the Panthers, it's just about the warm weather climates uh, for, for in general, where this is the best time of year. People want to come down here too. And you get a little bit of a taste like of what a celebration is in, in this region. And for, to also staple the sport of hockey here, that is the most, that's the greatest part of, of it all. And you, you look at different locations across sports of, of teams who have been just of fans, excuse me, who have just been deprived of championships. And you think of, and so many of those fan bases are thinking that also could be us thing and that was and that was me for a long time and i'm sure that was you um who who were listening to uh, who have seen different championship parades all throughout your lives and honestly personally if it's a championship parade that my team's not involved in uh i don't i only see like the little bit of clips on it but for for me for me and a lot of you whether you watch it on tv or whether you were there in person i'm sure n- all of your eyes were just all in and just soaking in the moment and 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 for the panthers soaking in that moment too and also i didn't even mention at the top for sam reinhardt he wasn't able to make the championship uh parade due to his uh best friend getting married but hey what are what a way for even though he isn't he wasn't able to attend hey an eight-year extension for him gives him an op- gives him an opportunity to hopefully experience that himself after missing after missing this one so just an overall great, great few days uh, for the Florida Panthers in, in this last week. And and the craziest thing, once the championship celebration ended for them, Bill Zito had to go to work. What? He had to go to work. Yes, because free agency uh, is, is every year July 1st, but also this condensed schedule for the NHL with not a lot of time off. And, and Bill Zito, for him, it's socially acceptable to go to work hungover after that championship celebration too but we're going to transition over to segment number three where we have to we still have to recap a draft that happened on friday on friday and saturday uh as as a lot of things in the world of the florida panthers went on over the weekend we're going to discuss that and more next on the locked on florida panthers podcast Segment number three here on this Monday, July 1st edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And also today, if you have if you have been, been informed, uh, Anton Lundell and Nico Mikola will be doing a autograph signing at Canesware today in Davie University Boulevard near Las Patas. If you guys want to ni- grab a nice hoagie uh, and one that is filling, Las Patas is uh, the place to go on University Boulevard right next to uh, 595. Also, a few extensions that happened going into the weekend is Matt Kierstead and Patrick Giles have been given extensions by the Florida Panthers. Uh, Kierstead has been a guy who's been in the system for a little bit. Uh, actually, I, I went to his uh, actual debut where he took his rookie lap. It was against the Columbus Blue Jackets uh, on, a, on a Saturday during that 56-game season a few uh, years ago. Actually, that was actually the game where Jacob and Winans and I met in person uh, for the first time. So crazy to think how that's a little bit has come full circle for the defenseman out of the University of North Dakota. Patrick Giles, who was uh, in the Charlotte Checkers on an AHL contract, uh, went to 
rookie show um rookie showcase for him uh deep camp and also earned himself an extension there for him so congratulations to patrick giles on still staying into in the florida panthers uh system and rasmus rasmus asplin who played a little bit of time with nashville came over to uh the florida panthers uh was up and down a little bit here with the cats not too much time here mostly in charlotte he's been giving a a, a one year two-way deal uh and also just like how a lot of things came so fast for the Florida Panthers, it was also the deadline for qualifying offers for RFAs too. So the following, uh, this is according to Cat Friendly, once again, of the ones who have looked to have been qualified are Anton Liddell, Josh Mahura, Rasmus Asplin, Santu Kinunen, Evan Cormier, and Matt Gusta. So two goalies into the mix. Your biggest priority, like I said earlier, Anton Liddell, Josh Mahura. Also, can can we give credit to Josh Mahura, even though he he played all 82 games and all playoff games in 2023, didn't really find himself really into the lineup uh, th- this time around as the Pan- obviously the Panthers got a little bit stronger. But Panthers look are looking to be giving him more opportunities and hopefully more playing time as also the Panthers are looking to get um have talent to um, contribute on the cheap so that's the goal here also remember that there's uvis belinskis in in the system too for the cats too that he could be a big piece as it's looking that brandon montour is likely going to walk unfortunately for the panthers i mean hey go get your bag dude so and also going into the draft we were we were discussing all about all the teams about can't wait for them to congratulate the florida panthers and none of them actually went up to the mic and say congratulations on to the Florida Panthers on winning the cup. And Bill Zito responded that with quote, nobody likes us. So crazy. Uh, also with the Florida Panthers, 97th overall having five, um, five picks from rounds three to seven. Okay. No, not a lot of movement, right? Wrong. <laughs> so, so the Panthers, uh, they tr- trade back into the, into the second round, 58th overall to draft Lin- Linus Eriksson, uh, forward out of Sweden, 6'0", 196 pound. What the Panthers gave up for it was a 2024, um, was a 2024 seventh, which was um, the Mr. Irrelevant pick, uh, last pick in the draft, and a 2025 second round pick. So the Panthers, once again, going into next year, won't have a first or a second. Uh, they didn't have a first or a second going into this one, but they think that Linus Eriksson is one that is going to, be a big part of their future, mo- maybe in two to three years. And actually, we're going to play a clip from Locked On NHL Prospects' Sebastian High on 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 his evaluation of of Linus Erickson. Could Linus Erickson be a serviceable third line centerman in the NHL as soon as three or four years from now? I'm Sebastian High from Locked On NHL Prospects, ready to break down his game for you. Erickson is a six foot, hundred eighty five pound left shot centerman eligible for the twenty twenty four NHL draft class. He played last season in Hockey El Svenskin, Sweden's second pro division, with Jurgenens IF, which is a very strong development program. There, he scored 11 points through 29 regular season games before scoring four goals in the playoffs in 12 games, including an overtime winner. This is a player who coaches and teammates are going to adore having on their side, as his defensive impact is a clear area of strength, and he's a strong distributor in the offensive zone, making the lives of his teammates easier. Stylistically, if he really hits his ceiling, think of the player along the lines of a Mikhail Backlund. Uh, for more on Erickson and all other 2024 draft eligibles, make sure to check us out at Locked On NHL Pro- Prospects on YouTube or wherever you find your podcasts. So, uh, <laughs> not me also pressing that um, the video in the middle of me talking. <laughs> Oopsie, but there you go. There was a Sebastian High of Locked On NHL Prospects breaking down the game of Linus Erickson and also spoke about how two guys that he models his game after Joel Erickson Eck and Alexander Barkov, two defensive first centers in, in the NHL. So this is also something to think about. The Panthers have to maybe think about life after Sam Bennett, who has one year left on his deal. Anton Lundell after a great playoff is maybe looking to hopefully now graduate from three C to two C and, and Bill Zito's first ever draft pick when when being when being hired as the general manager of the Florida Panthers so this was his goal the first time to officially develop him yeah the offensive numbers maybe haven't uh come come to fruition there but the defensive game that carries uh from home road and even as as he grows and matures into his body which I mean Anton Lindell is still in his early 20s 
So there's still loads of time for him. So looking for a bridge deal, maybe somewhere north, somewhere north of three, three point five, somewhere around that area is w- what we can expect Anton Lindell to get. But also with the ninety seven um, with the ninety seventh pick, uh, Panthers drafted defenseman Matvey Shervin uh, out, out of Russia in the fourth round. They drafted uh, forward Simon Zether out of Sweden. Uh, this was the pick that they kept in the Tarasenko trade. And it's crushing if you lost this one. It would have been an immediate asset at the, uh, taken away had they lost. And and to recover some of the draft picks too, and also maybe the impulsive decision that Bill Zito might have made going into the draft. Oh, man. You, when when Bill Zito was mad after 2022, after that sweep, I, I do not want – I'm glad we have we did not see mad Bill Zito at the, at the, at the draft going this way. But we saw – an aggressive Bill Zito and strategic Bill Zito in development. And hopefully Linus Erickson uh, is definitely a uh, part of that mix for the Panthers. No fifth round pick for the, for the Panthers of their own, but they, uh, they traded um, seven, uh, 28 spots out of 141 uh, to in of that trade that they got from Philadelphia uh, for the 169th pick in the sixth round and a two Oh four um, 201st pick uh, too, where, the from which were from the Seattle Kraken, uh, too, for the Panthers. So they drafted forward, uh, Stepan Gurbanov, uh, out of, out of Russia, a forward, and also, uh, with their own six round pick, uh, they also, uh, drafted Hunter St. Uh, Martin, uh, center out of Canada, uh, from the Medicine Hat Tigers of the WHL. And like we said before, the before going into the weekend, the Panthers are going to draft the goalie every single year. And this is the strategy whenever you have the goalie excellence department that the Florida Panthers have. And also how you never know which goalies are going to come uh, through through the system. And uh, honestly, this is something that is spoken about so many times. Doesn't matter where you're drafted. If you have the and this is actually Bill Lindsay spoke about this on the draft uh, show with Doug Plagans. They had a three, they had a three hour show where it was just recapping the year, going over the picks for the, for the NHL and also reminiscing and talking about draft position about if you work hard, you're able to get through. I mean, for, and, and I mean, look at the amount of guys that the, that the Panthers even had on their roster who weren't first round picks. Uh, for example, like, like a Brandon Montour, he was not a, a first round pick. Uh, for for the Panthers, that's a guy who developed uh, pretty well. Sergey Bobrovsky being undrafted uh, too for for them. So many so many different players in different situations. Ryan Lomberg is one too uh, for the Cats. So so many different opportunities for these guys to get to hopefully make it to uh, the NHL. And even for uh, even for the Panthers a few years ago with. Uh, Mackenzie Weger, he went to the he went down all the way to the ECHL and made his way as a top pairing defenseman right before the Panthers traded him too. So the development for the Panthers and the scouting department for them, they've they found their diamonds in in the rough uh, too. Every everywhere, uh, not everywhere, but in most cases they have been able to. I mean, Gustav Forsling uh, was one uh, w- once again for for the Panthers. And going into this, you are and. Going into media day, excuse me, last year, the focus was still to look down at Charlotte and then and then and and have more eyes on it and and hopefully grow more guys into NHL roles. As once again, you're now going to have to be doing this on uh, on the cheap as the bill has come due. And does a pandemic uh, in the NHL hurt uh, the Panthers' ability to keep some of their guys that they're trying to, that hopefully they're trying to get a lower offer? Yeah. It's going to hurt and it's going to hurt for a little bit because I mean, you're going to have guys playing new roles. Car- Carver Hagee, once again, he was not playing power play time minutes prior to the last uh, few years. And he's slowly grown into that, even though he was taken out of power play one in the Stanley cup final. I, I, I want to believe that if you're put um, for Hagee back on that top unit, that he's going to have a drought like he did uh, during the, during the during the postseason, as as he's a, a very mature player too, for him, Gustav Forsling is going to be the the power play quarterback for the Panthers eventually if they don't trade for a guy who can move the puck quickly in the offensive zone. So you're gonna have to really trust everything that you have internal. Panthers are not gonna be that uh, team that is 
in my opinion, at least, that's going to go big game hunting uh, this season. It's going to be more about keeping the guys that you have and maybe signing one or two guys mostly from the outside who, as far as a big ticket. If, if anything, you're going to get small tickets and, and these one-year deals so everything can reset next year as if, if everything goes well, with a with another with another increase in uh, the salary cap, maybe we could be looking at maybe ninety three million uh, total spending for the NHL going into next July first. So hopefully, that gives the Panthers more wiggle room in order for him in, in order for Bill Zito to still uh, sign guys because you have Barkov, Kachuk, reportedly Sam Reinhart and. Reportedly, they're trying to get an extension. Nothing's done in Carter Verhage. So you're looking at four guys making north of $8 million at least. And this is not the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Toronto Maple Leafs have four guys signed over 10. The Panthers have guys who are 10 and under, and they've won a cup, and they have no state income tax. Let's not forget that, Panther fans, how good the Florida Panthers have it. And this is why, once again, that this product that is right here in our region is sustainable. And I can't wait what else Bill Zito does going into day one of free agency and how he builds this and puts this together so that the Panthers can make another run next year. That's going to do it for this edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. Come back for tomorrow's edition of the show where we're going to be breaking down more of day one of free agency for the NHL. And maybe we will have some details more on on the contract status of Sam Reinhart, all the clauses and the actual AAV. We're going to break that on tomorrow's edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. But in the meantime, if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On HL Network, including Locked On HL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey, Flip Livingstone, and Steel Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So I'm Armando Velez, signing off. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.